I'm going to show you all the different tile combos in Loop Hero. Let's start with the basics. If you make a 3x3 of rocks and mountains, either or, they don't have, it can be mix and match any you want, it will turn it into a mountain peak. This will give you additional stats for the same amount of space and counts as a mountain tile next to every rock or mountain you place adjacent to the mountain peak. Meadows give heal 2 HP at the start of each day, but if you place a meadow next to literally any other thing on the map, then the meadow will heal for 3 HP at the start of each day. If you place two battlefields near each other, the path that overlaps will spawn blood paths. Blood paths spawn a blood claw enemy every four days. When you place a storm temple, it creates lines up, down, left, right of the storm temple. If you put a forest or a thicket in any of those lines, it'll turn it into a burned forest, which will give plus 0.5 magic damage. It does not matter if it was a thicket or a forest, it'll turn into the exact same type of burned forest. If you place a river next to these, it will increase the amount of magic damage it gives to 1 instead of 0.5. If you place a vampire mansion and a village directly adjacent to each other, it'll turn the village into a ransacked village, which spawns up to four ghouls once per loop. After three loops, the ransacked village will turn into a count's land, which is better than a standard village, restoring more HP per loop. Once you place 10 mountains or rocks, it'll spawn a goblin camp somewhere on the, around the loop just totally randomly. Goblin camps spawn a goblin on an adjacent tile once a day. If you place a swamp next to the goblin camp, it'll turn the goblin camp into a goblin lookout, which adds a goblin archer to the battles on adjacent tiles, the same way a vampire mansion adds a vampire to the battles on adjacent tiles. Blood groves have to be placed adjacent to a forest or a grove. If you place it next to one of these, and then use an oblivion to destroy the thing that it destroy its required building, it'll transform into a hungry grove, which occasionally attacks the hero and devours enemies that have less than 20% HP left, instead of 15. Wheat fields can only be placed next to villages. But if you place a wheat field next to a village and then use an oblivion to destroy the village, it'll turn into an overgrown field, which on top of the scarecrow also creates a field of blades on empty tiles during combat. Which looks like this. Also, fields of blades have a soul. I don't know why they have a soul, but they have a soul. Rivers can actually go right next to roads, and with bridges they can even go over roads. If you place a river next to a road, it'll create a reed, which spawns a fishman every three days. This is what fishmen look like. They also have souls. If you place a river next to a desert or sand dunes, it'll turn the river into an oasis. An oasis reduces the hero's attack speed by 0.5% per oasis, but it also decreases the attack speed of all the other creatures by 1%. If you place a river next to a battlefield, it'll transform it into a shipwreck. Shipwrecks spawn a siren once per loop on top of spawning the chest like normal. This is what sirens look like. Also, they have souls. Every 10 forests or thickets that you place will spawn a village question mark. These spawn wooden warriors every two days. These enemies do not attack, they only counterattack, which can also be extremely dangerous. If you place a wheat field next to a village, it'll also spawn the overgrown fields that we talked about earlier. The Smith's Forge removes up to two items from your inventory every time you pass by. It has a counter on it, and every time that counter goes to zero, it'll spawn a living armor nearby, a very dangerous enemy. What makes living armor particularly dangerous is that their, even their most basic ability on Chapter 1 reduces all damage done to this creature by 1 HP, meaning the best way to defeat a living armor is with attack speed. Bookeries replace three cards in your hand with three random cards. Each bookery only has 20 uses. After you use it 20 times, it turns into an abandoned bookery, which adds tomes, or basically magical books, to nearby battles. If you overlap a vampire's space with the abandoned bookery space, it'll spawn vampire mages, 
This is what a vampire mage looks like. Bookeries only have 20 charges. Afterwards, they turn into abandoned bookeries. If you have a temporal beacon overlapping with an abandoned bookery, instead of spawning a tome, it will spawn, and instead of spawning a time watcher, it will spawn a time watcher mage, or just a watcher mage for short. Treasuries give you random resources when you place other buildings next to them. If you fill in all the tiles next to a treasury, it'll give you a bonus bunch of resources, and then the treasury will turn into an empty, empty treasury, which spawns a gargoyle every three days, which flies over and lands on a totally random tile each time. If a suburbs is surrounded on all four sides by suburbs, it'll transform the suburbs into a town, which doubles the amount of experience gained from killing enemies compared to a normal suburbs. There's a secret enemy that you can spawn. Remember those goblin camps that we mentioned earlier? Place 10 mountains of rocks to spawn a goblin camp, and then every day the goblin camp spawns a goblin. You can see the day meter at the top left. When the day meter is almost ready, pause the game and get ready, have an oblivion card, then play the game and pause the second the goblin appears. Use an Oblivion card on the Goblin and the camp at the same time, and it'll look like nothing happened, but wait until we get back around to that part of the loop. Once you arrive at the tile that that Goblin was going to walk onto, you'll suddenly get into a battle with a Dark Slime. This enemy is not in the Encyclopedia by default, but once you encounter it, it'll appear there with its own entry. And there you have it. That's every single tile combo in Loop Hero as far as I'm aware. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. I think that was literally everything in the game. There is one more tile combo, sort of. You can spawn a secret fifth boss that you can fight. Uh, I will post a link to that video. I have a video about that. I'll post a link to that at the top of the description. But other than that, I think that's literally every single loop tile combo and enemy combo in loop hero one last thing i want to add into here is i'm going to put links in the description for every major loop hero video that i made so there's going to be a video for advanced tips and tricks how to spawn the final boss like the fifth boss builds for each class the most overpowered supply items and so on and so forth every single relevant major loop hero video that i made i will link in the description below so be sure to check out the description for other helpful loop hero videos If this video helped you, consider helping us by subscribing to our channel. Tap this button over here and hit the red subscribe button. Subscriptions help a lot, even if you never watch our videos again. Ha 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 ha!